This video is brought to you by Dr. Kristen R. Bromley's Guitar Method Book Series and Online Music Academy. Hi, I'm Dr. Kristen Bromley. Welcome to my online academy. It's so great to have you joining me here in these online lessons. It's a Theory Thursday. I love music theory, don't you? Now, I say that a lot, but understanding theory really opens up the world of music to us better. And as we work on the fretboard, it really opens up our ability to play the guitar. So, I love it. In this lesson, we're going to look at the different types of chords there are, specifically at the triad level. In the next lesson, we're going to look at seventh and sixth chords, so there's more pitches that can be added. Then in the lesson that follows that one, we'll look at ninth, eleventh, and thirteenth chords. So lots of cool chords to understand here. Let's go ahead and dive in. Now I'm using the word triad. Three notes is really what we're talking about. We're talking about three note voicings. And that's sort of the foundation of all the chords that we play. In more traditional music theory, a triad really is looking at these four chords that I have written here on top. And we're looking at the notes stacked in thirds. That means skipping over from space to space or line to line on written sheet music. Intervallically speaking, we're skipping over that second clear over to the third. If you need help with intervals, there is a Theory Thursday lesson that explains intervals in general and on the guitar. So you could check that out. Now, let's look at these chord types. So we have major chords and we have done in on these 30 Thursday lessons a lot of understanding the, the major chords how we play those triadically all over the fretboard really unlocks the fretboard and also creating major chords in the first position so that's really our our starting point there so major chords have the root the major third and the perfect fifth. We've seen this in the last few lessons we've been working on chord progressions, how that comes right out of a major scale. But I got that root, that major third, and that perfect fifth. In the key of C, that's C, E, and G. So the chord symbol for a major chord just has the name of the root note, the root note being step one of that key. So in the key of C, that's a C. Minor chords, by comparison, have that flatted third or the minor third instead of a major third. So here's the major third, then here comes the minor third to C, E flat, and G. In the key of C, C, E flat, and G. The chord symbol for a minor chord is going to have the root note and then something that tells us it's minor, a lowercase m or a minus sign. So that's a minor chord versus the major chord. Now, Building on that, we have some other types. Diminished, what happens with the diminished is we take the minor chord and we flat the fifth and we get a diminished chord. So this has the root, the flatted third, and the flatted fifth. And we get that diminished sound. C, E flat, and G flat in the key of C. The chord symbol for this one's gonna have the root and then a little circle up in superscript sort of area and that tells us it's diminished or D-I-M period. That'll be the other thing you'll see is sort of an abbreviation for diminished and that tells us that we play a diminished chord. Now as I'm going through these, you might be thinking, I need to know how to play such and such. And under the quick answer playlist, there are lots of helps with how to play different chords. There's also helps with the chord, the chords and harmony books, one and two, which is really just one book nowadays with the current edition that walks you through playing the most common voicings for all these types of chords that I'm gonna talk about in this lesson and the next couple lessons. There's also a new edition of the theory and technique book, which will be coming out hopefully sooner than later working on it hard to get lots of cool things added into there from the old edition that is out of print and it will have how to play these chords in all sorts of ways all over the guitar and explains these things in great detail with lots of visuals so you got the diminished and so we have that one the augmented kind of is like a major chord with a sharp five so diminished like minor with a flat five now we've got augmented which is major with a sharp five so we get the root we get that third and then that sharp five or augmented fifth. This is an augmented triad. And it has C, E, and G sharp in the key of C. It sounds like so. And the chord symbol is going to have the root and then a plus sign next to it. Or the root and then A, U, G for augmented with a period. That's usually how you'll see the chord symbol for that one. Which is a major chord, 
or that sharp five. We don't run into these two very often in pop and rock and folk and so on types of music, but we run into them all the time when we're playing jazz and maybe show tune type music and music that has a lot more rich harmony. And then of course, occasionally we will run into it actually with folk music, pop music, country music, rock music, that sort of thing. So we've got those. Those are our fa four main traditional triad types that we would talk about if we were doing classical music and we're talking about the theory. But when we're playing guitar and we're playing pop music, jazz, rock, folk, and so on, sometimes we have some other types that we actually treat as chords, whereas in classical music theory, a lot of times they treat these more as non-harmonic things that just sort of happen. So, suspended four, super common, super common on the guitar. We end up playing sus chords, suspended fourth chords. These have the root, the perfect fourth, the perfect fifth. So in the key of C, that C, F, and G. It's not major, it's not minor, it's suspended. What we've done there is we've replaced the third of the chord with the perfect fourth above the root. The chord symbol for this one has the root, then sus4 or sus, just sus as a nice simplification there. So we got that one. We also run into sus2 chords. In this case, we've replaced the third with the second, so we're going to have a major second. So for a sus2 chord in the key of C, that'd be C, D is that major second, and then the G. So we get a sus2, and with this one you'll actually see sus2. If we don't see the 2 written there after the sus, then we think it's sus4. Now we'll learn in the next lesson, the next lessons really, that we can actually have the 2 and the 4 both in the chord, and the 2 and the 9 sort of inner interspersed. Sometimes we're actually getting the four thrown into a chord nowadays where there is the third, which is kind of interesting. So a lot of voicings that wouldn't have been traditionally okay in traditional styles are now showing up, which is always what we see when we're doing music. So pretty cool there. Now there's a couple other ones, a little less common, but we do, especially at the triad level, but we can run into them. And then when we start adding sevenths on, we run into them a lot, actually. So we got the minor chord with a sharp five. This would have the root, the minor third, the augmented fifth. So root, flat three, sharp five. C, E flat, and G sharp. We would see set with the root and then something telling us it's a minor. Lowercase m or it could be a minus sign. We could see a plus five or a sharp five. We're gonna see that written there telling us to play that sharp five. So C, E flat, and G sharp. Kind of interesting. If you go back to the lesson where we talked about inversions, so we did inversions and triads all over the fretboard. There's Theory Thursday lessons that have gone over that, kind of involved, pretty cool stuff. Those ones, you'll find that this actually, the minor, the minor sharp five and the major chords are inversions of each other. So you could have where you could be playing C major, you're gonna have three triads. And here we're doing C minor with an augmented fifth, while it's going to be C, C minor with the augmented fifth is going to give us a different set of chords with the C, E flat, and, and G sharp. We're going to end up with the same, the exact same triadic shapes. So it would be what am I, what key am I in, and I would be there. So where I'm playing here, C, E flat, and G would be the same notes as an A flat major chord, same three different shapes. That may be a little involved, you may want to check out those triad lessons if you need help with that, but they're inversions of each other. Same thing actually with these two, they're inversions of each other. So you're going to find in one key, you'll get the three options, they're going to have the same notes as another key. Kind of like modes, when we were working on modes a little bit when we are looking at the chord progressions. Okay, so then the last one here is we could have a major chord, Root, major third, diminished fifth. So we're gonna have that root, major third, and then the diminished fifth. And we get C, E, and G flat. We could have played that in the same range as I played all those others. 
So those are our chord types. And with that one, we're going to have this, the root and then something telling us it's a flatted fifth. So a minus five or a flat five will give us that. So those are the triad, the three note shapes. This is the foundation. We play in pop and rock and folk styles, that sort of thing. We play triads the majority of the time. But, except that a lot of times we'll play like a, a dominant seventh chord, which we've talked a little bit about in its context of the chord progressions. So in the next lesson, we're going to look at how we can add more colors to these, sixths and sevenths especially. So we'll look at those chords next. Keep having fun. On, on Thursdays, we've got these theory lessons. On Tuesdays, technique lessons. Right now on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, there's a jazz course that is airing, which is super cool. And then on Saturdays right now, we're working on improvisation in the pop, rock, and folk styles, those kinds of things, blues, all of that sort of fun stuff. And there's hundreds of lessons on all sorts of different techniques and playing styles already on the channel. So lots and lots and lots of great stuff. Keep having fun, take care, and we'll see you again. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. For more in-depth lessons and to progress through a free guitar course, check out my Guitar 101 series on YouTube and my Guitar Method books, which all come with access to hours of in-depth video lessons. You can find more information about me and my products at kristenbromley.com. Take care.